here we go. A little CD player test of the Sand Sewage AU6600. Stereo D Lab today on the bench. We have a Sand Sewage AU6600 integrated amplifier. Complaint? Left channel is low and distorted. So what I'm going to do is connect a signal using my audio generator. I've got some dummy load resistors connected and we're going to look at it on the scope and see if we can determine where the problem is. All right, let's take a look at our test setup. I've got the top popped on the AU6600. For my speakers, I just installed two 10 ohm 2 watt resistors. Since I'm not going to be testing at high wattage, there's no problem doing this. I'm going to go into the auxiliary input using a liter LAG25 audio generator. And we're going to watch the output on the scope. See if we can spot what's going on. All right, we're all connected up. I got my scope set at dual trace. Did you hear that? The little protect relay came right on. So that tells me there's no DC present at the speaker terminals. That's a good thing. Bring up my signal here. Got my audio generator down too far. There we go. There's my signal. So the bottom is the right channel and the top is the left. You can see the left is clipped and less than half the amplitude of the right channel. So the question is, is that problem in the preamp section or is that problem on the amplifier? Luckily, the Sansui has a switch that separates the preamp out from the main end. So I am going to move my audio generator to the amp in and set that switch at separate. Let's see what happens. So I move my signal in to the main amp in and flip the switch to separate. Audio generator is set at zero. Turn it back on. Now, I won't use the volume control on the Sansui. I use my audio generator. And you can see, we had the same issue. So the problem is on the final amplifier board. So next step, I'm gonna remove that bottom panel and take a look at the final amplifier board Hopefully I can see everything. I believe a lot of it is buried under the panel in the back that has the RCA input. So it may be a little bit difficult to see. So we know that the final outputs are probably not shorted because the protect relay would not turn on. So I'm guessing a driver problem or perhaps a coupling cap. Let's get the bottom off and see. So my guess that the outputs probably weren't shorted it's probably incorrect. When I popped the bottom, I spotted these fuses. These two are for the right channel. That one's good, and that one's good. These two are for the left channel. And they're wide open. So if you go to this fuse and touch the collectors, that goes to that collector, and it goes to that one. So what would blow those fuses? How about shorter final output transistors? <laughs> you may say, well, why don't you just pop in some more fuses and try it? Well, not a good idea until I verify if these are really shorted. So that's what I'm gonna attempt to do if I can get to the terminals. I can't get to those transistor leads without disassembling this whole thing. So I decided I'm just gonna go to the emitter resistors and check to the collector of each transistor and make sure I don't see a short. And I don't. So more than likely the finals aren't shorted but there's probably something messing around with the bias. So I am going to go ahead and install some fuses and I'm going to measure the DC voltage right on the speaker terminals and see if we have DC present. Well, here we go. I changed those fuses there originally 5 amp. I put in 1 ampers. We have 10 ohm resistors as dummy loads and I'm just looking to see if there's DC voltage across the speakers. 
So I'm going to bring it up on a Variac and we'll watch the DBM. Oop, there goes the protect relay. I'm up to 100 volts. And I do not see high levels of DC or smoke coming off the resistor. So maybe somebody just connected some bad speakers and popped the fuses. Let's go ahead and hook this thing back up to the scope. All right, I've got the unit powered up. Still on the Variac, around 110 volts input. We're back to audio generator injecting into the main amp only. We're monitoring on the scope. Left channel's on top, right is on the bottom. There they are. I don't see any clipping. Everything looks fine. So it appears as though maybe somebody hooked up a shorted speaker and popped those fuses. Fuses did the job. So I replaced the collector fuses with five amp. Just powered up. Oh, my kitty's coming in here. Now we're on the auxiliary input. So we're using the preamp. My balance. She looks pretty good. Oh, kitty. Excellent. Let's get a CD player on it. A good girl. Yeah. So hey, everybody. This this is Polly. She's my little shop rat. She's got six toes. A lot of fun to have her in the shop. Her brother's over there, but he won't get on camera. She likes the camera, don't you? Yeah, you good girl. Yeah. So before I hook up a CD player, I just want to remind you guys how important it is to have an oscilloscope on your test bench. Without that scope, I never would have saw the clip signal and the loss of amplitude. Can't do this by listening to a speaker or trying to catch it on a DC meter. You have to be able to see it. Good shops always have a scope on their audio bench. Here we go. A little CD test of the sand sewage. AU6600. say we're good to go we'll give it some cook time but the sansui is ready to be in somebody's system <laughs> 